We're encouraged to be nice to people and put their needs before our own. As if that would make us accepted or loved somewhere. But there's a danger in being overly kind and considerate, because that's where respect ends and exploitation begins. Learn one thing. Nobody respects the guy who is too nice. We live in a world where we don't always get what we give, reciprocity or honor are becoming increasingly difficult to find. Could being too nice put our own lives at risk? Today, you're going to be surprised by the things that happen to people who are extremely nice. Let's begin. 1. Learn to take more care of yourself, don't expect anything from people. Stoics taught that we should accept things as they are and not depend on the actions of others to find happiness. Giving without expecting something in return protects us from malicious people and demonstrates integrity and altruism. However, it's hard to be completely selfless when giving, as we often believe that by helping everyone we are doing good, and automatically, that people owe us something in return. In fact, doing too much for others without limits or conditions can make us appear weak and desperate for attention in the eyes of others. Imagine yourself always ready to help co-workers with their tasks without receiving a thank you. At first, your willingness may seem commendable, but over time, they may start to expect you to take on all responsibilities. This creates a dynamic where you become emotionally exhausted and they miss the opportunity to learn and grow. This situation can leave you frustrated because your expectations of reciprocity aren't met. To avoid this cycle of exhaustion and disappointment, it's essential to learn to say no. Don't feel guilty for refusing something that compromises your well-being or goes beyond your capabilities. By setting clear boundaries and communicating them respectfully, you strengthen your self-esteem and avoid relationships of exploitation and disrespect. Saying no is a form of self-care and emotional freedom. Remember that your time and energy are valuable. By putting your own needs first, you not only protect yourself from unmet expectations but also teach others the value of mutual respect and self-sufficiency. Take care of yourself so you can offer help genuinely and sustainably, positively contributing to your well-being and that of others around you. 2. People will expect you to give them something all the time. Stoics teach us that true value comes from acting in a good and logical manner, not just doing what others want. Moderation and balanced giving help us maintain control over our actions and prevent us from developing habits that harm our mental health. You've heard your whole life that people are creatures of habit, and that couldn't be truer. People adapt to patterns and ways of life. This means that if you're always giving, the people you help will expect you to always give them something. You put them in their comfort zone, and they won't take on many responsibilities, knowing that you'll be there to do it for them. Imagine you're always available to solve your co-workers' problems. At first, they may thank you and acknowledge your help, but over time, they'll start to expect you to solve everything for them. If one day you can't help, they'll be frustrated and might even question your attitude. This happens because you've created a pattern of behavior where they've become accustomed to your constant assistance. This behavior creates a vicious cycle of dependence where people stop taking responsibility and expect you to do everything. If you don't value yourself, no one will look you in the eye and tell you to think more about yourself. At least, don't expect that kind of empathy from the people you help. Establish clear boundaries and teach others to value your generosity without abusing it. It's important to communicate your needs and availability assertively. For example, instead of solving everyone's problems, offer guidance on how they can solve them on their own. This not only helps build their autonomy but also relieves the pressure on you. To illustrate, think of a teacher who does everything for their students. They prepare all the materials, do all the reviews, and even correct homework with detailed explanations. Initially, students may appreciate this dedication, 
but over time, they start expecting the teacher to do all the hard work. This prevents students from developing their own study and problem-solving skills. Instead, the teacher could encourage autonomy by providing guidance and feedback but letting students make the necessary effort to learn. Remember that helping others is important, but not at the expense of your well-being. Set clear boundaries and communicate them firmly but kindly. Saying no doesn't mean you care less, it means you're taking care of yourself so you can help more effectively when it's truly needed. Finally, learn to value your own needs and well-being. When you put yourself first, you teach others the value of your help and set a standard of mutual respect. Balanced generosity is a virtue, but it should be exercised with wisdom and limits. Value yourself, take care of yourself, and help others without losing sight of your own needs. 3. Before doing for others, do for yourself first. Stoics taught that it's important to live according to reason and virtue, to set boundaries, and to put our own wants first if we want to maintain balance and not relinquish our identity and well-being. If you put everyone else's needs before your own, you'll be left with only the leftovers of your own love, which indicates that something inside you is missing. Start to understand what makes you put yourself last. How do you feel when you spend the weekend alone or come home every day knowing no one is there to greet you? Do you feel sad or happy? Does being alone scare you or bring you peace? If you are doing so many different things because you want to run away from yourself, the blow will be twice as hard. On the one hand, you'll have to confront yourself sooner or later. On the other hand, your bad mood will worsen as you begin to put others' needs before your own. Self-care is one of the most important parts of being healthy. Before you can help others, you need to make sure you're happy and well cared for. For example, you should never give someone chocolate unless you have truly enjoyed some yourself. Similarly, you shouldn't offer to clean a friend's house until you've cleaned your own. The rest of the world comes after you. Put yourself first. Think of the analogy of the airplane. In an emergency, we are instructed to put on our oxygen mask first before helping others. This is because if we aren't able to breathe, we won't be able to help anyone effectively. The same logic applies to everyday life. If you don't take care of yourself, your ability to help others will be limited, and eventually, you'll become exhausted and resentful. Imagine you are constantly helping friends and family with their problems, dedicating your time and energy to resolving other people's issues. However, you realize that your own needs are being neglected. You feel tired, irritated, and maybe even a little bitter. This situation is a clear sign that it's time to reassess your priorities and put yourself first. Start practicing self-care daily. Take time to do activities you enjoy and that make you feel good, like reading a book, exercising, meditating, or simply relaxing. Set clear boundaries with the people around you and learn to say no when necessary. Remember that saying no to others is often saying yes to yourself. Moreover, by taking care of yourself, you become a positive example for those around you. People will start to see the importance of self-care and may follow your example, creating a healthier and more balanced environment for everyone. Remember, putting yourself first is not selfishness, it's a necessity. Only when we are well with ourselves can we truly be present and helpful to others. Value yourself, take care of yourself, and live according to your needs and desires. This is what the Stoics would teach us about living a full and balanced life. 4. You will only attract bad people. People come into our lives because their energies align with ours. That is, if we vibrate low, we attract negative, depressed people with dark souls who want to hurt us. On the other hand, when our vibrations are high, we attract people full of good energy, kindness, enthusiasm, dedication, and joy. With patient judgment, 
we can build relationships that are real and beneficial to both parties. Therefore, it's important to be careful how you spend your energy. When you are exploited by others, you lose so much energy that you start to vibrate at a low frequency. This low vibration attracts needy and opportunistic people who only want to take advantage of you. They approach you only to get what they can, and then they leave without even saying thank you. Imagine your energy is like a battery that needs to be recharged. If you continuously drain it by helping everyone indiscriminately, you end up with no energy for yourself. This not only drains your life force but also affects your mental and emotional health. Instead of attracting people who truly care about you and want your well-being, you attract those who only want to take advantage. To avoid this, it's crucial to establish clear boundaries. Learn to say no and prioritize your well-being. This doesn't mean you have to be selfish but rather that you should be selective about where and how you spend your energy. Cultivate relationships with people who reciprocally support and elevate you. Surround yourself with individuals who share your vision of life, inspire you, and are there to support you during difficult times. Remember, you deserve to be surrounded by people who value your presence and your contribution. Protect your energy and inner peace, and make choices that reflect your worth. By doing so, you'll attract relationships that are genuinely enriching and satisfying. 5. Listen to the people who love you. Stoics taught people to be calm and in control of themselves. Self-discipline prevents us from getting stuck in bad habits and allows us to maintain healthy relationships. When scarcity is a regular part of our lives, the need for something increases, creating fertile ground for addiction. Imagine you're always feeling deprived of something. It could be affection, recognition, or even fun. This deprivation can lead you to seek relief in harmful habits. For example, you might start drinking frequently, and what was initially just a glass of orange juice becomes excessive alcohol consumption. Someone close to you may notice that you're overeating or even gambling too much. It's crucial to pay attention to what these people say, especially if they are people who care about you. Your first instinct may be to get angry and deny that you have a problem. This is a common reaction when we are so caught up in our own problems that we can't see the severity of the situation. Remember that people who care about you want what is best for you. When someone close expresses concern, it's because they want to help you avoid a further fall. Instead of rejecting their observations, reflect on them. They are trying to help you stop from falling and move forward. Think of a friend who starts to notice that you're drinking more than usual. They may comment that they're concerned about the frequency and amount you're consuming. Instead of getting irritated, consider their words. Evaluate your behavior and see if there's a pattern that could lead to a bigger problem. Perhaps, in doing so, you realize that you're using alcohol as a crutch to deal with stress or loneliness. The same applies to other behaviors, like overeating or gambling. These activities can become escape mechanisms, filling a temporary void but creating bigger problems in the long run. Self-discipline, as Stoics taught, is the key to avoiding these vicious cycles. Facing your deprivation head-on, Seeking healthy solutions such as exercise, meditation, or therapy can be the difference between living a balanced life and falling into an abyss of addiction. Therefore, value the honesty of those who love you. They are mirrors that reflect parts of you that you sometimes can't see. By embracing their concerns, you not only protect your health and well-being but also strengthen your bonds with those who truly care about you. In short, being too kind can be bad for you. It's easy to get lost in the needs of others and forget about yourself. But as the Stoics taught us, we need to take care of ourselves so we can better help others. Significant way. If you are ready to become a better person, not just for others but also for yourself, subscribe to the Motinvesting Stoicism channel. Here, 
we will explore the teachings of the Stoics and how to apply them to our modern lives. Join us on this journey to a more meaningful and balanced life. Subscribe to the Moat Investing Stoicism channel now and embark on this journey of self-discovery and personal growth.